What is going on everybody? It is time for my Ghostbusters Frozen Empire movie review. Let's do this thing. Now before I jump into my review, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. Plenty more movie reviews and movie related content headed your way. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss a single one. Thank you in advance if you do happen to subscribe. Now I was really looking forward to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire because I really enjoyed Ghostbusters Afterlife and I thought it really reinvigorated the franchise, brought it into the modern day in a really fun, accessible way where people who love the original movies could, could enjoy Enjoy it, and people who had never seen a Ghostbusters movie could also, you know, discover the franchise for the first time and then go back and watch the original movies. Now we've got a sequel to that movie, and here we have the new Ghostbusters gang. They have now relocated to New York, the OG location from those first two films. It feels good to be home, and they're busting some ghosts. They're having a good time. They may not be phenomenal at it, and they definitely aren't good at minimizing city damage, but they're getting the job done in their own special way. But unfortunately, things aren't going great because a new entity, a new evil entity, is threatening to break out of its prison and basically start a new ice age in which everyone is frozen to death and fear takes hold. So yeah, you know, super small stakes, Ghostbuster stuff. Nothing crazy. Now, director Jason Reitman, who directed Ghostbusters Afterlife, unfortunately, he is not back in the director's chair here, but he did co-write this movie, so his spirit is still with us here in this sequel. But this film is directed by Gil Keenan, who previously directed the super underrated animated movie Monster House, which if you haven't seen that one, super underrated, underappreciated gem. And I think he actually does a great job taking the baton from Reitman. I think he keeps the spirit of his film alive while also creating his own stamp on the franchise and delivering a really entertaining installment. But of course, the reason why the sequel and why the previous film really worked is because of the cast. The cast is fantastic. I mean, Paul Rudd, charming as always. Carrie Coon's fantastic. McKenna Grace continues to be a standout. Finn Wolfhard, he's terrific as well. We also got some new players here with Kumail Nanjiani. We got Patton Oswalt. And of course, we've got the OG Ghostbusters gang, which includes Bill Murray, Ernie Hudson, and Dan Aykroyd. And of course, you know, we're always going to feel that, you know, missing presence of Ivan Reitman. And we miss him in this franchise, but I felt like the last film was a great way of sending him off. And everyone in the cast, the new players, the old players, everyone's fantastic. The chemistry is terrific. And especially when, you know, the new players and the uh, returning players are all working together to take down this threat. That's where the chemistry really jives and where this movie becomes extremely entertaining. What I really dug about this installment is that it's creepier than most Ghostbusters movies. I mean, not to say that the original movies and even the last installment, not to say there aren't creepy elements and creepy scenes in those movies, but this one definitely had a more creepy foreboding atmosphere, which I really dug. It felt different. It still felt like Ghostbusters, but it felt notably different, and I liked that. And I also really liked how expanded this world and mythology felt. It didn't feel like we were just using the same creatures, the same villains, you know, the same characters. It didn't just feel like we're hitting, you know, repeat. It felt like we're actually trying something new. And we have a new villain here who I love the look of this villain. I love the threat that this villain poses and how menacing he is. And I was glad to see the franchise start to evolve a little bit and expand its world. It's something this franchise desperately needed that the previous film definitely hinted at, but was a little bit too scared to really venture out on its own just yet. But this movie finally takes the training wheels off and, like I said, pushes the boundaries of this world and of these characters and gives us something new, finally, for once. And I think the blend of action and comedy is on full display here. That is like the trademark of the Ghostbusters movies. And I think that uh, Keenan really does a terrific job directing these action sequences, especially the opening scene and opening car chase, I think are really fun and really get you invested in the story and these characters yet again. And I really love the atmosphere he creates. Like I said, it's a very creepy, immersive atmosphere. You really feel the, th you know, the built up threat of this villain and his mythology, and there's a great buildup of suspense and tension, you know, before this creature finally gets unleashed. But I really did appreciate the heart that this movie has, too, just like the previous film, especially with, you know, this new family that has become the new Ghostbusters team, essentially, and I really feel like their dynamic is kind of put to the test here, where McKenna Grace is Phoebe, you know, she's kind of sidelined in this movie because of her age, and she has to kind of deal with that, deal with the consequences of that, and try to find out who she is outside of the Ghostbusters, and I like how that tied in with her new family dynamic and I thought that was really interesting and really 
involved in. And the movie absolutely gives you the entertainment value that you're looking for. Like I said, great action, really fun comedy. The humor, I think, works far more often than it doesn't work. And, you know, when you got great comedic players like you do in this movie, that's not really a surprise. But I think the script here really does give these actors great material to work with, and I was happy to see that. Now, is this movie perfect? Of course not. There are a couple things that did bug me. The first of which is I love Phoebe as a character. I think McKenna Grace plays her so well, and I love how smart and precocious she is. And I do like how the movie explores the fact that she's a 15-year-old. She's a teenager, and she's trying to figure herself out, and she's trying to do normal teenager things, even though for her, her definition of normal isn't exactly our definition of normal. But I didn't really love the fact that we sidelined her for most of the movie, where she doesn't really get in on the action until the latter half of the film. And, you know, that was a bit of a bummer. Her journey is interesting, but, you know, I wanted to see her more involved in the Ghostbuster stuff, but that's just me. But I think the big problem this movie has is that it takes a long time building up the unveiling of this villain and, you know, him breaking out of his prison. It takes a long time to finally unleash this creature. And you think, okay, once this creature's unleashed, this is going to be like a huge climax. It's going to be amazing. And visually it looks stunning, but the climax I feel gets resolved very quickly. And I felt like if we didn't build up this <laughs> creature so much and actually let him, you know, out of his cage earlier to do more damage and to become more of a threat, that climax wouldn't have felt as truncated or as underwhelming. And that was really just the big issue I had with the movie. The climax is entertaining, but I felt like it could have been a lot more than it was. But in the end though, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I think it's a really solid continuation of Ghostbusters Afterlife. I really love this new team of Ghostbusters. I like how they're including the OG team in ways that feel earned and don't feel like they're just thrown in there for the sake of nostalgia. Of course, there's a bunch of nostalgia that's thrown your way, especially if you're a fan of those original movies. But again, like the previous film, it, it doesn't feel like it's shoehorned into the movie. It feels like it kind of naturally bleeds into the story and that's the best kind of nostalgia. I had a really good time with this one. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's it's a really entertaining, family-friendly, fun adventure movie. And I think if you like the previous movie, I think you're really going to enjoy Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. So in the end, I'm going to give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I'm realizing it's very hard to say Ghostbusters for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know, maybe I have cotton mouth or some shit. But anyway, I'm going to give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I'm going to give this movie four out of five stars. I think it really delivers on the entertainment value. The cast is fantastic. I think it's got some really strong direction as well. I really enjoyed the story and some of the journeys for its main characters. And I just think it's just a really good time, even despite its flaws. So that is my review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope you take it into consideration if you're thinking about seeing this one or not. And if you do happen to see it, let me know in the comment section below what you think of it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you middle of the road on it? let me know in the comments below. I want to know your thoughts. And if you want to follow me on social media, my handles are at the bottom of the screen and they'll be in the description of this video as well. And make sure to follow my film podcast, Film on Tap, where every other week, you know, me and my crew, we talk about movies, we talk about movie news, we review movies, we go on weird, wild, hilarious tangents. It's a blast. Links to that in the description as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic. I could have made a really terrible ending joke about... You know, if you're looking for reliable movie reviews, who you're going to call. But I, I held back. I stopped myself. I really want to. But I'm not. <laughs>